Hey there, it's Patmos and nice of you to join me for this special Ostrif video where we are going to do a city start build along. I get a lot of questions about how to start a game with Ostrif, how to make sure that you get to nine houses before the winter and to survive the first winter and, and just get going with your city and start expanding. So I already made the uh, tip video, uh, which you can obviously find if you search for it. Uh, but I just keep getting questions about it, so I thought, well, let's do a build along video. So we're going to start up a whole new game, and the whole idea of this game is that you can build along with me, so you can just do the same. Of course, you can ever so often just pause this video and catch up if you can't keep up, but I'll try to, to keep it a bit slow, so that you can just follow what I'm doing. I'll try to explain what I'm doing, and hopefully this can help some of you to actually get started with a great village. Um, this video might take a little bit more than half an hour, the usual length of my videos, but that's fine. Let's just go get to like one year, one and a half years, so you can really see what, sh we sh what you should do. So let's start up a new game. It doesn't really matter which map we select. I do know that map 4, map 6 and map 7 are pretty easy to start on. The other ones can be a little bit more tough. We'll start on map 4 this time. Don't forget to check the... Uh, Tree type you want, we'll go with spruces and we'll load up map 4. Now, here's the game. Immediately hit that spacebar button and pause the game. A lot of time gets lost while you search for a place to start your village and you don't pause the game. So, obviously, just pause the game. Now, here we have the map. We can see where all the uh, nice things are. Now, of course, we have a fishery later on, we get farms, so we need a lot of open space. But we also want to be close to the water, because some of the things that we need require water. And for me, a nice starting place would be this area. It's close to the river, we have trees nearby, and we have plenty of open space for farming, etc. Now, when choosing a spot to place your base camp, always think about where you really want your city center to be. So, for instance, I want my city center to be somewhere here, in this area, I think. Don't make the mistake of placing the camp right there, because those camp buildings will be there for a little while. So, place them at a place where you think you can start your village, but won't build your village center. So, we're going to start the village in this area, expand this way, and we'll get the village center somewhere here. Now we want to be close to the trees, we want to be close to where we're going to build and we want to leave plenty of room for industries like a forestry and the thatchery and the clay pit. So in this example we will build the um, village center right here. This means that we have plenty of room for housing here, we have plenty of room for industry here or maybe housing and industry. And later on we can expand all this way and get farms going, get the city center going. So I think this is a good spot. Now don't make the mistake of unpausing, just keep the game paused so we can start off all the things that we need. Now we don't need a lot, but what we do need is a forestry, a clay pit and later on a thatchery. That's all that you need from an industry to get going and get to nine houses. So we'll start off with the forestry. It needs to be close to the forest, but also pretty close to where we are going to build the houses. So travel time is as minimal as can be. So we'll build it right here, close to the trees and close to where we are going to build our home. So let's just put it down right there. We'll put a clay pit right next to it. Of course, you can't move the clay pit later on. It will remain where it is, but this is a nice spot. I don't really mind if it's there, so we'll just put it down. Well, the other industries that we need are a thatchery, right there. We'll just turn it around. It should be close to the water because that's where they will get a reed for it. So we'll build a thatchery. And later on we might need a carpentry and a smithy, but we're not going to place those yet. We'll place those a little bit later. And now we will start to plan all nine houses that we need for our city. Still, no unpause. Just get the industries going and think about where you want stuff. Now, if we want to start building houses right here, you can see that the travel distance from the forestry and the clay pit to the houses is pretty far. 
and that's not going to work that's going to take too much time too much walking back and forth and that will make sure that you don't get to nine houses in time so build these houses close by now i want to see i always build in in patches of six houses so we'll do it like this one two three and rotate it four five six now this is not going to be the city center but this is a good spot to have six houses close to the river close to the industries and walking time is very short even from here where they rest walking time is very short and all we need now are three more homes and we have nine houses and all we have to do then is get building now i built these three houses in this fashion one two three now of course because i do plan ahead i always already play the ex place the extra three because we can always change the building queue that's no problem that's very easy actually so this is another three houses so now we've placed 12 houses and that's all that we need for now now to make things complete i also place the wells already i place one well per six houses so we'll place one right here and we'll place one right here for now this well will do fine for everyone so don't get these changed up in the production or in the building queue let's keep it like it is well now that we have everything that we need we can unpause the game and we'll go to speed three for a little while and see what happens they are going to build everything first the forestry then the clay pit we don't need the thatchery straight away so i'm going to move it up four houses so four, first we're going to build these four houses and after that we're going to get the thatchery. Now as you can see we have five people building. I'll pause for a second. And one mayor. That means six men. You look up here you have nine men and nine women. The number of kids can vary but every map starts with nine men, nine women. We don't have any kids apparently. Or oh, we have 18 adults. We have 26 people in so... That is about eight kits. Well, that's nice. And now all we need to do is add these people to be builders. So now we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people in and one mayor. That's eight men. So there should still be one without a job. Check here. Yes, there's one without a job. Now they're going to build this forestry. We're going to wait until it's done and then I'll pause again for a second. I'll zoom in for all the uh, nice looks that it gives. Here it is. And there it is. It's done. Let's pause for a second. They've already built the clay pit almost. If you want the forestry to work efficiently, you need at least two workers. Why? They will chop down a tree. And to carry the logs back in here, you need two people to carry one log. If we check what we have, you can see that we only have 3,600 wood left. One single house is over 4,000 wood. So we need a lot of wood. So what I usually do is make sure that I get four people in here straight away. So that they can bring in a lot of logs, get a lot of wood going. And as soon as this wood stock pile is full, then I will remove two people. But for now, we'll put in four people. That means if we have nine adults, we need to get rid of four people here. One, two, three. And we still have one available. That should be four. Let's do the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So all nine men are now distributed between building, being the mayor, and the forestry. So let's unpause and let's see what happens. It will now say there aren't enough workers to chop trees because three of the men that were building are now relaxing. But now they're getting all in and they're already starting to bring in the logs. This is done. They will now start to move stuff and get building on the first house. Now let's check your calendar. It's half, May, half March. So we've been at it for half a month. That's all that we did. We already got the forestry the clay pit and we are starting to build our first house now let's keep that in mind so we can see how progress is going now you'll see they bring in logs they will cut them up into wood and they'll keep around 12,000 wood in here and at the same time they will make some firewood they will add extra logs as soon as everything is full let's just keep them going 
And as soon as you see logs piling up here, that could be the time that we get a few people out. So all we have now is four builders. They're not building that efficiently with only four people, but they can do the trick. We first want a steady stream of wood for all the other buildings, because still we don't have enough for all buildings. Everyone takes a break every now and then. Everyone needs to sit every now and then, but it'll be fine. We already got one log to spare, so that's a good thing. Ah, there it's gone. We're getting some extra firewood. It only takes f about four logs to completely fill up all the firewood, so that's not a real issue. We can see two men walking. They take down a tree. You get two logs out of one tree, so that's a good thing. And there we are with the firewood. It's we already passed what we have set as our goal, and everything is completely filled now. Why do I wait now? Well, if you get a big pile of logs, if you immediately need wood, two men can just pick it up, chop it into pieces, and you get enough wood again. If you don't have a big pile of wood, they have to walk first, which takes a lot of time. That's why I do keep four men in there now, wait until they fill up all the logs, and then we can put them into the building uh, industry. So as you can see right now, we're already building almost a month, and they've only nearly completed one house. That's taking too long. We don't have nine months left. But as soon as we have a big pile here, and we're already halfway there, we add those two extra, and they will do a lot faster building a house. All right, people moving. You bring in all the stuff. All the family starts to live there. They might even start sowing. So we get the first little harvest from one house. There it goes. Perfect. Alright, six logs in, seven logs in. They're already bringing all the wood and stuff here. So all the wood is already being delivered. Almost. And these still have a lot of logs available. So that's very good. Alright, we have 11 logs here now. So that's plenty. So let's get two people out. And put them in the building business. One, two. Now the forestry can work completely independent. Do all it needs with just these two people. And we get these two extra builders. So we go from four to six builders. Which will speed up the construction of a house significantly. As we can see here. There's the house coming along nicely. And now it's only the end of April, and we've already built two houses. Nearly there. Let's hope we can make it before the end of April. Every now and then you'll see people moving away. They take a rest. Others come back. And there it is. Right by the end of April, we got two houses up. Which is very nice. One of the things we can also do now is start to plan ahead. As soon as all nine houses are done, we are going to need a carpenter and a smithy. So let's set those up as well. We'll put the uh, carpenter right here next to the uh, thatchery. And this makes a nice alley where all the industries can be. And of course we need a smithy. Now I'm going to place the smithy on this side. Because we're not going to build houses here. So let's place the smithy on this side. Now as you might know the smithy needs a charcoal pile. Let's build two charcoal piles. Because I always like to have plenty. Ooh, that's uneven terrain, so we can't build there. Where should we put it then? We can put it on this side. Or we, can, or we can put it right here. At least one. Hmm. Alright, there's not a lot of room to build them, so let's get rid of this. This is not the right spot then. That's the good thing of planning ahead. You can move industries and just give it some other place. That's all fine. We could even say that we'll place it somewhere right here or whatever, because we don't need it straight away. And we can still see this is the alley, so we'll place it right here. There goes the smithy. And then put charcoal piles next to it. One. Two. And now also the women will start working because they will start filling these up and get all the bark going. Alright, we're a little over halfway May. We already got the third house. They're building the fourth one. So you can see it takes just a little over half a month to build a house. And that should be plenty of time to get all these houses done. 
You can still see a pile of logs here, so it can keep up actually, which is good. That's exactly what we want. So we don't need to put extra people in the forestry. We already get the first charcoal done. So this all looks very good, very promising. There they go. We got a lot of beehives, so we'll get a lot of honey, which is good. Only a few beehives will produce a lot of honey. That's a lot of food for a little village. Here comes the fourth house. Now you will see that these houses already will take a little bit longer to build compared to these houses because they are a little bit further away. They have to make the extra walk and that will immediately translate into building time. So really make sure that you build close enough to the industries that you really need, which are these two. The rest we don't really need. We only need these after all the houses are done. Although we are building three extra houses, so we can move these up and build them before we get the extra houses. And of course we need those wells, because we want plenty of water so everyone can have a drink. So we'll do it, uh, we'll do it like this. Here comes the next house. You can see it already took more than half a month to build this one, because they have to walk further away. Now these two will be bringing it in a little bit closer for a walk, so that should go a little bit faster. Here comes the thatchery, that's always fairly quickly built. And it can rely on women to do all the work, so we don't use up any men. So let's set it up like this, only women, and put in four women for now. Later on you might need women to do different jobs, you can always get people out of course. But for now this should do the trick. Well, when we're halfway done with this house, we should be halfway done getting the nine houses. So somewhere here would mean that we will be halfway, which is interesting. Because we started in March, so you get March, April, May, June. We are four months in the game now, and well, once this month is completely full, and we've already built almost five houses. There it goes. End of June, it's halfway done. Perfect. And of course, all these tents will get away. This one will stay until we get the um, town hall. This one will stay until it's empty. This is a temporary storage, but that's all fine. They will remove anyway. Once we build a cart shed, you can move these three carts into a cart shed. And then we can remove this one as well. And this whole area can be free for a village center, for instance, or just other industries. Since we are also building the smithy right here, we can just put in a few industries and make this a nice spot. We can build a lot of houses in this area and we can do some farming right there. So far, things look rather okay. I do wish they would build this a little bit faster, but here it comes. Luckily, these three will take less time to travel because they will just go like this. Now they have to go all around. There comes the roof. Perfect. They're already bringing in the new stuff, so that's good. We have five houses now. We're over halfway done. And we should have until November. So we have half of July, September, October. August, September, October. So yeah, we do have a few months left. We should be able to build everything. You can see a few of them are gathering all the stuff. The rest of them are already building. Let's just keep it like this. If you get really nervous and you think, ooh, I don't think they're going to make it, you can always get one of these guys out because they have a lot of logs now and add him into this one so you have an extra builder. I'm not that worried, actually. I think we're going to make it, so I'm not going to do that. Right, three houses had the time to do some harvest, to do some sowing, and they will harvest later. These were too late, so they're not really sowing anything, but that's fine. They all have food for at least one and a half years. So, in your first winter, build a farm. Make sure you get three fields, and then you have plenty of food, and plenty of time to produce food on their farm, to feed all the mouths in the city. You don't need anything before that. Here comes the house, two-thirds done. I think it's time for us to start planning ahead for our first farm, so let's get going. 
Here we have the farm building. I'm going to place the farm right here so they don't have to walk that far from the houses to the farm. We keep this area free for industry. And it would also say that we have plenty of room here for the fields. Now, with this farm, you can't really build the um, fields yet. You Normally, you already have one farm somewhere and you can already put down the fields. Because we don't have a farm yet, we can't do that. But as soon as the farm is done, it should still be winter. We'll just pause the game, place the fields, set them all up and then you can start going. Right, it's August, three houses to go, already building one of those three. So even if it takes this whole month, we should get one in August, one in September, one in October. And we should have a month left to well, build other stuff where everyone will already be living in a warm house. Let's hope we can make it. This guy's already bringing some stuff here. That means that things look very well. There's a third guy coming in to build. So three of them are now building. Three of them are resting. There comes the fourth. There comes the fifth. So that's very good. And number six. Now it's really speeding up as you can see. Now two or three of them will soon go for a rest. Yep, yeah, there goes one. So building will slow down a little bit. But it's fine. There goes number two for a rest, number three for a rest. Here we go. For the end of August, it's already done. We only need two more houses now. Yeah, this is not the well I want built first. I want this one to be built first because this one is placed better for all the homes to, to get the water from. This is still looking good. Plenty of thatch left. I guess we can do some decoration then. People need a resting place. And now they're all still walking towards these um, little logs that are laying there where they are going to sit on. So I'm going to add a few benches to save some extra time. Because then they don't have to walk all the way towards those logs for resting. They can just walk outside their house and sit on a bench. That's also something that can save you time. So, I didn't do that before because I want to show you that it's really possible if you just do a little bit of planning and keep the walking distance in mind. That even without those benches, you can easily get to nine houses in time. I mean, it's still the start of September and we are already halfway building the eighth house. So, it's really possible. And with those little tricks like benches where they can rest so they can rest sooner. If someone has to walk all the way towards this log, then take a rest, then walk back, that takes up a lot of extra time. If you build a few benches, they will rest a lot quicker and that saves time. So before halfway September, we just have one house to go. So maybe by the end of September we could already be done. And then we have two months to spare until the winter. And everyone is nice and warm and safe in a house. Alright, what I'm going to do soon is remove all of this. Because I want to get rid of all that stuff. I don't like that. We also need to think about a cart parking. Which I want to build right here. So people can get a cart and then get all to these building materials fairly quickly. I think that's important. Yeah, let's get rid of this log already. It's fine. Just have one tent left, so those will... For, for them, this is the shortest route. But for all of these people, they can just go to a bench and have a rest. Alright, we're not going to be done before the end of September, but it'll be early in October that we should be done. Now, of course, I can imagine if you watch this video that you have some questions about how to exactly do this or whatever or, or you want to know why I did a certain thing just ask them in the comment section I will respond to them but I'm, I'm really hopeful that this might help people to get a good start on any map just take the time to plan it a bit while the game is paused keep walking distances very short and as you can see October just started and we have all nine houses 
it's all done. We don't need anything else yet. Now I'm going to continue this video because I just want to show you how to get past to the first year or year and a half. So we'll just continue for now. But it's still just October and we are already building a farm. That's very nice. And this area is starting to get clear so we can put industries etc. in there. And the forester can really keep up. That's very important to me that the forester doesn't run behind because if you don't get produce enough wood in the beginning they will always have to wait until they can continue the house and that's six people doing nothing while they wait for wood. That's why it's so important to start off with four workers to completely fill this up and then switch them out and get them into building because then they can keep up. Here comes the farm. It's already halfway done. Looks very nice. Here comes some thatch. Probably storage. Hopefully they will yeah, they will empty out the storage soon. The only way to get rid of the storage is to empty it out. Which they probably will later on. Now we need five women to work in here. We have nine, which means that we can five in here, four in here, but then there's no women free. So I'm going to get two people out of here. Because we also need marketplaces, etc. if we want our city to grow. We'll get to that a little later, but I'll show you then. Alright, 90 extra thatch, 90 extra thatch, there it is. All the thatch is there, so come on, finish the farm. Then they should be getting into the carpenter. Here comes the farm. Well, we have plenty of time, so I'm not going to pause the game. We're just going to add the fields. I'm, I am going to add the manager, because that's one that's been to school. And I really want that to be fixed. Alright, let's see. We need a field size 50. So let's see how far we have to go until we reach 50. Alright. Uh, we need to rotate the map a little bit. We have to go all the way to... Let's see, right here, 50. How should I place the fields? Should probably do it like this. Something like this, 50. Come on. Again, 50. And then again, 50. Ooh, that's not long enough, 50. All right, 50, 50, 50, that's nice. We add another field just next to it. I really wish they fixed something for this, just so that you can set it to 50, 50, 50 and just place a whole field. Where you can just put in the numbers of the field and then, and then place it, because this is very hard sometimes to place the field the right size. Alright, let's do it like this. I think putting them a little bit close together might work. Save travel time so you can get can sow some extra. Alright, 50, 50, 50. There it is. Alright. Let's set this up. Now, the most easy way to get started is buckwheat and potatoes. I'll make this a fellow field. We'll put in buckwheat and potatoes. And here we get potatoes and buckwheat. They are both good sources of food. They both produce a lot. We can add women to this now, by the way. And we can activate the fields. And now next year, these fields will be sown in and give you a good harvest. And really help you out in making sure that you get enough food for the people that you already have. And of course for the people coming in. Now as you can see here, what we need for people to come in is a market. We need housing and we need jobs. All of them will become available soon. We'll get one guy into the carpenter. That means that we have to get one guy out of here. And we get one guy into the smithy, so we need to get another guy out of here. That leaves us with just four workers for now. But it leaves us with people in the smithy and in the other stuff, so that's very good. I usually say that the carpenter can pick up 5,000 wood. I like it that way. We can also use laborers. Just set everything up the way you want it. I want it always like this, but you can just set it up like you want it. 
point. All all right. So we are now starting to produce iron and nails, and we do need nails. We only have ten left. But as you can see, you do have enough nails to get everything done. Even get a farm and a smithy and the carpenter. And now winter is here and we have some issues. Next thing, move the carts. We want them all to be in the cart shed. We can build one extra, which is very nice. Ooh, he's already moving the cart. That's very good. Then we can get rid of this building. All right, yeah, let's get rid of it. We don't need this well anymore because we already have two wells. So let's get rid of it. And I think it's time to do some extra planning now. I'll slow down the game speed one. We need the extra houses to bring in extra people. We need a market because we need to sell some food. And of course we need a granary. Why do we need a granary? Well, that's where you store the food. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to build a granary. Yeah, where am I going to build it? We want it to be in a central spot so people don't have to walk too far to get the food. Now we can build a few houses here, we can build a few more houses here, and this will be some sort of a central spot. So I built a granary in this case. I'll rotate it a little bit, we'll build it right here. We'll put two market stalls in front of it already, because I just want it done. Alright, now what can we do? We can sell some buckwheat and we can sell potatoes, of course, because next year we will have those. But as soon as the granary is done, and we're going to build it after this house, we can start buying some stuff from the people here. They already did good harvest, so for instance we can buy some honey and start to sell that to all these very nice people. And that means that we have food on the market. And right now we don't have enough food for sale, so no immigrants will come in. But as soon as that house is done and we sell enough food, they will come in and we can really use the extra people. I always think that when you have around 50 people, adults in that case, then you can really have a good self-sufficient village. Until then it's struggling a bit, you have to move people around. You, we only have four builders right now because we can't afford to put all the men there because they need to be in the carpenter, they need to be in the smithy. So I think it's really important to get extra people into your town. And with this option, we can do that. We can see the extra cart is not being built because we need metal parts. Smithy is creating metal parts. Of course, I would very much like to get some extra people in there. But to get them, you need to distribute food through the market. And we can't right now. So let's build that granary. With that granary, you can buy up food from other people. And then we can redistribute it and get extra people in. Now what I would also like to do right now is get a few extra houses going. So here we go, one. Ooh, it's uneven terrain. Yeah, this map is only a little bit hard because of all the uneven terrain. That's what makes it tough every now and then. All right, six extra houses. That should bring in plenty of people to work with us. Now, I'm not really going to make sure that my village looks exactly the way I want it and, and, and have all the beautifications in it. This is just to show you what you can do in the first one and a half years and to make sure that you get a good start and get all the people in and that's what I'm trying to do right now and I'm not going into the aesthetics of a very cool looking village etc that's what you can do yourself all right we're out of nails that's an issue that you will run into in the beginning of the game it's fine we only need 48 Smitty will make 10 at a time so pretty quickly he will start to build some extra nails if you really want to speed that up, you can of course get rid of one builder, put him into the smithy. Because they're not really building anything right now anyway, so those guys aren't doing anything. And by putting one extra guy in the smithy, you will start to create some extra nails, which can be very good. And what you can also do is make sure that you get the trade podas, trading post up. Because if you have a trading post, you can start trading for stuff. Also nails, so we'll put the trading post up right here in the industry alley. Not going to build it straight away, but we might do it fairly soon so that we can buy the stuff that we need. One of the things you do want to get into is the town hall. And I'll explain to you why. I'm going to put it right here, by the way, next to the trading post. If you get the town hall, we'll do it right there. You can manage the economy and you can 
turn wages down, etc. So that you won't lose as much money as you are right now. Because we started off with 2,000. Building doesn't cost you any money. So in a year, we already lost almost 300 just by paying everyone. And if we can turn wages down, etc. We will lose less money. We can trade and earn some money. So get that town hall going. Just to make sure that you get what you uh, need with the economy. Alright, here comes the granary. We do need one woman to work there. Alright, let's set it up. We need buckwheat and potatoes, of course, as soon as the farms start producing. I would like to set those up ASAP. And then we need some honey, for instance. I know there is a lot of honey, so let's buy up a thousand from local people. It's buying up stuff. We'll put it in here as well, so we can sell it. And all we need now is a worker, probably a woman, so we'll get someone out of the farm, put it in here. Hopefully they get there soon. Or, yeah, they're filling this up, I guess. Oh, not yet. All right, there she is. Now we are selling stuff, and now you can see everything is in the green, so a new family can settle in town, because you have one house to spare. And let's wait and see if a new family comes living here. I sure hope so, because it will be very helpful if you get a good family in. Now, of course, you can have it just you get one guy and a, and, and a woman, a man and a woman, and, and one kid, or you can get a very big family with a lot of people. That differs, of course. Ooh, we get a father and a mother and three kids, but those three kids won't work. You can see they bring their own stuff, so they'll be fine for a while. And we got an extra family, so we have one extra guy to give a job and one extra girl to give a job. That's really good. I want her to be in the farm. So, just get the extra houses going. You don't need a trading post and trade for food. All you need is a granary. Buy some stuff from your people. So, let's see. Is there anything else that we have plenty of? I guess cabbage. So, we'll buy up some cabbage. 500. And we can redistribute that as well, so everyone can eat enough. And as soon as these extra houses are done, it'll be fine. I want this guy to be a builder. Because I really want everyone to uh, help out building as many houses as we can right now, just to make sure the uh, extra people are put to good use. Here we go. Of course, buying all that food costs us money as well. So we really need the town hall to lower the prices. Ooh, there's a guy in there. That's not supposed to happen. We'll leave him in here until the sewing is done, but then he will get out. Now, of course, with only five people, sewing won't go that fast, but it'll be fast enough. So don't worry about it. We don't need harvest to be highest number possible because we can manage anyway there's no issue here and as you can see it's just the start of march this is all that we've built in precisely a year so yeah you can do quite a bit you can get to nine houses before the winter i'm sure you can you can even start a prosperous village where you buy stuff from the people redistribute it and make sure that you we already grew to 31 people so that's very nice we get a farm, we have industries, and I know all of you guys can do the same thing, and girls of course, when I say guys I always also mean the girls, all of you can just do this and have a very fun game, because from now on, with each family coming into town, the game gets easier, because you can fulfill all the jobs that you have available, you can provide everything because you can build new industries and put the people in there, so yeah, the game start can be pretty tough, but in the end, if you get past the first year, you get to nine houses, the game gets easier. Now that we get new families coming in, with every new family coming in, we get more people. And that's just making everything easier. Alright, we got the four carts. That looks very good. We should do some preemptive repairs. Let's see what family will come in. We have 31 people right now. What will happen to it? There they come, and this is very good. Two people that can work, plus an elder that can work, and two kids. So this is a good family. We're up to 36 people now. 
and yeah there you are they are getting there with sewing as soon as that's done we will get the guy out he can start to work as a builder or this guy will yeah he will should we put well we put the other one in as well as a builder we need a lot of builders very curious to see though if we have enough nails I don't think so so that could be an issue but it's fine they are producing nails pretty quickly right here now so that should work out this is already growing so that's very good we get a good buckwheat harvest we get a little less potatoes but that's okay we're not going to consume over 2,000 of those a year yet, so no worries. Only 50 more nails needed. Yeah, that looks good. Now they're all sowing, so all of these will now start to produce their own food in the farms. See, yeah, all of them have sown their patches of land. So they will provide some food for themselves as well. Sewing is nearly done. He's just sitting there so we can get him out. We can get the girl in. We can get to this job. Yes, we have five builders now. Very good. So they can quickly build this. We got the nails that we needed. So all we need to do now is set up the economy the way we want it. And then you're off to a very good start. And you can just go on and develop your village the way you want it. So I'm really hopeful this has been a helpful video that can really help you get through the first year. Get going with food, with all the houses that you need, with all the industries that you need. And after we have set up the economy, I think that'll be all for this video. But that should give you the tools that you need to start creating all these amazing villages. And if any of you wants to take the time for it, if you have built a very beautiful village, just make a nice screenshot and send it to me uh, via email it's in the description I would really love to see the villages you all are creating so hopefully a few of you will do that because I'm very curious to see what beautiful towns you make here comes the town hall two-thirds done and it's time to get a few extra houses going now I think we're going to move up the trading post because we don't need it yet. Oh, we are going to need it for iron at a certain point because we will run out of iron. All right, there we are. Economy. Well, let's make this a very small economy because that's the cheapest. All right, we'll set it to 10. Set this to 20. That'll be fine. Market prices. Keep this the same. Yeah, you can keep all this. Well, tax you can put up. Not that there's many wealthy people, but a little bit of wealth tax is fine. Alright, now we won't lose that much money anymore, which is very good. Do we have three people? No. We have a few people. A few women are working to fill out these uh, sites. That's very good. Perhaps we can soon put someone extra in the thatchery. Or in the granary, for instance. We have a lot of honey to sell. All the cabbage is already sold. So that's an issue. Could well be that before the harvest we run out of the different types of food. But that's okay. We got the extra families in. And as soon as some of this is harvested, you will have plenty of food anyway. But I think all of these families, yeah, they all have plenty of stuff. So don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Yeah, this looks good. Well, they're building an extra house now. Once this is done, we'll have 12 houses in 14 months. And I think that's a good moment to end this episode. So I'm really hopeful this was helpful. And if you like this video, please give this a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. Help me grow my channel. That'll be awesome. And of course, I hope to see you then in another video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.